Hi, in this video um, I thought I'd show you how you can put text on a path or around a shape. Um, basically, it, to, to put text like this around a circle or within a circle, it's called putting it on a path. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that in Inkscape because at the moment there's no facility to do that in Scan and Cut Canvas. So I'm just going to close this canvas page down and we're in Inkscape and we're going to start a new project. So first of all, we're going to create our path, which is the shape effectively that you're going to put your text on. So we're going to start with something simple. So I'm going to come over here to the Bezier tool and select that. And then I'm going to come up here and click the Spyro icon here, which looks like an S on its side. And then under shape, I'm leaving that as none. And I'm just going to drag out a wavy line. So I'm going to left click and drag and left click and drag and just keep moving. And then click at the end, right click at the end or let double click left at the end to, to set my shape. So that's my path. Now I'm going to come over here to the text tool, click once on the page and just choose a font. So we'll try Arial as a basic font for now. And I'm going to type happy birthday. And depending on what you're welding your word to will, will depend on how you type your text. So sometimes they look better if they're all in capitals. So I'm just going to do this in capital letters. And hit select. Okay, so now I've got my word and I've got my path. I'm going to left click up here above and drag an imaginary box around everything so I get both. And then while I've got both selected, I'm going to come up here to text and click put on path. And you can see that's put the words on the shape. Now, these words and this path are connected. So if I just click anywhere on the page to deselect and if I click on the path and hit the backspace or the delete key on my keyboard, you'll see what happens because they were connected. So to make the words stay in the shape, we have to do something else. So I'm going to go back and undo. What you can do from here, you can um, stretch out the word if you want. Or if you click on the path, you can alter the shape. So if you're not happy or you want more bend in it, or you can move it backwards and forwards until you're happy with how you want the shape of your words. Okay. Now you select the path. Sorry, you select the words. And what you have to do to separate these two is come up here and go to path object to path. Now you can select the word, the, the line, the path line, and you can move it away. And you can either use it again or hit delete. And this time the words will stay because you selected the words and you did path object to path. So that's how you put text on a shape. Now, if you wanted to keep this in this shape, obviously you'd need to cut it like that and then transfer it to your words. So if it was vinyl, you could cut this in vinyl, weed away all the excess vinyl and leave these words like this in this shape on your mat, put transfer tape over it, lift it off and put it down where you want it and it would be in that shape. If you wanted to use this on, say, a scrapbook page, you would do the same thing. You'd cut it in card or paper, whatever you want to cut it in, take away all the excess paper or card from around it and get something like low tack, very low tack masking tape. Rub the masking tape. You might have to put a few lines of masking tape over your, your word and then peel that away. And that will transfer all these letters in this shape onto your masking tape and then just put the words down onto your scrapbook page. And um, obviously what you'd need to do is before you put it down, turn it over and put some glue on the back of each letter then put it down on your work, make sure you rub it down properly 
and then peel away your masking tape very gently and it would leave you, you, your text in that shape. The only other option is to just type your word and position your letters yourself, but that defeats the object really, so you might as well do it that way. Okay, so now you can put your text and weld it to a shape. So let's just go back to our Bezier tool. This time we're going to click the first icon against mode and make sure we've got none here. And I'm going to left click and let go and drag out a shape and left click and let go drag out a shape and then when I get here I'm just going to double click to join that up then I'm going to use the select icon to deselect this shape and then I'm going to come over here and hit the text button and we'll do the happy birthday again and click the select icon to select then I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both of these and come up here text put on path and you can see that my path this shape wasn't big enough so if I just left click anywhere on the page to deselect and then choose my path and drag out you can see that because they're still connected I can drag out or alter the shape until I'm happy with how they look then we're going to double click at the beginning of the word to bring up these icons again and we want this vertical shift and I'm just going to keep pressing on this up arrow until these letters move down so they overlap the top of this shape There you go, they're overlapping. Now I'm going to use the select icon to deselect, drag an imaginary box around everything, and then I'm going to go to path union, and they will weld. So if you want to remove the path, as we did in this first step here, you have to select your letters and go to path, object to path, and then you can select your path and delete it. If you want to weld your letters to your path, you need to double click at the beginning of your word, use the icons that will appear up here, the kerning icons, and bring your words down, and then select everything and do path union. I'm just going to come down here and right click on here and put a fill on this so you can see. So that's another option. And then now I'm going to come up here, I'm going to select the circle, I'm going to hold the control key down and drag out a circle. And then I'm going to come over here to the fill, I'm going to right click on the fill and remove the fill just for now to make it easier to see. Then I'm going to come to my text tool, I'm going to type my happy birthday again. drag an imaginary box around both of these and go text put on path and then if I want the words to, to come more around the circle I need to left click to deselect left click on the circle only hold the control key down and drag the circle in to make it smaller until I get the look that I'm looking for and don't worry about it being smaller because you can always resize it in a few minutes and that looks about right so I need to left click on the page to deselect I've got to select the words this time and then what I need to do I need to double click at the beginning of the word which is in the front of the H here so double click in front of the H that brings up the kerning boxes again. Left click on the up arrow of the vertical shift so that I get the letters coming down over the circle. And you can see they've overlapped there. Then drag an imaginary box around both. Just going to try that again. There you go. Drag the imaginary box around both and go path union.
and they have welded and if I come over here and right click on fill and fill it with black you'll see so that's another option and then I'm just going to do one more and use a different font to show you another way of using it so I'm going to click the circle hold the control key down drag a circle out I'm going to remove the fill come over here to my text tool left click on the page and I'm going to use a stencil font and this font's called Stencilla so I'm going to choose that I'm going to take my capital locks off and I'm going to type happy birthday again in fact no I'll put my cap capital locks back on I'm going to bring this over here just so it's nearer the circle drag an imaginary box around both go to text put on path click somewhere on the page to deselect click my circle hold my control key down drag the circle in until I'm happy with how it looks this time I want to separate the two so I'm going to select my words and come to path object to path then I'm going to choose the circle and hit delete or the backspace on the keyboard to get rid of it and that's left me with my words now I'm going to come over here click, click on select another circle hold my control key down I'm going to drag a circle out until it's bigger than the words and that looks about right I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both of those and come up here to the align icon and use center and vertical make sure you've got selection chosen here and center vertically and horizontally and that puts the words centrally inside that circle now I'm just going to left click on the page to click on the circle you can see down here it says it's an ellipse and I'm going to click on the words and you can see it says it's a group so this might not to show you and then if it doesn't I'll show you how to rectify it I'm going to drag an imaginary box around both in fact I'm just going to choose the circle and I'm going to make it red just to make it easier to see on the screen and while the circle selected I'm going to send it to the bottom so I've got a filled circle on the bottom and we'll an imaginary box around both of them come to path difference nothing's happened try path exclusion and nothing's happened and it's because the words are a group so I'm selecting a group here come up to object ungroup and you can, I don't know if you can see on screen but you've got little bounding boxes around each one of these letters if I left click to on the D you'll see it they're all okay so they need to be individual letters so we're going to try again drag an imaginary box around both and come up here and we'll try difference first of all and see if it works it doesn't so we need exclusion so path exclusion and that's now stamped the the word out if you like in my circle we can select the circle click it again to get the rotate handles and we can rotate it round just so it reads the right way on screen and I used a stencil font because this will be exactly how it will look so if you cut this this is how the words will look if you use a normal font to do this you'll sometimes if you've got an O in your word you'll have an O I'll just type an O so you can see what I'm talking about and I'll change the font to Arial so if you typed a word with an O in it when you cut this out your machine would cut around the outside edge and it would cut around this inside edge so really you'd end, you'd end up with a big hole so if you're going to use something like this and you want the words cut in the middle you're best using a stencil font 
just get rid of that because all these letters are connected with these little breaks here okay so that's a way to do that and then so you can put your words your text on any path really just play around with it choose different shapes um you know draw shapes draw straight lines wiggly lines zigzag lines whatever you like but before you bring this into canvas now what you need to do just to make sure that all these fonts will open in canvas select your design and go path union and just make sure you've got to fill because sometimes when you're doing this you might not have a stroke or a fill and when you bring them into canvas you can't see them on the screen so just make sure you've got at least a stroke or a fill and then i'm going to come to this one obviously you probably wouldn't have all these different designs on your page or you might but so on this one we've got both a stroke and a fill come path union come to this one path union just to be on the safe side and this one see we've got oh there no, we've got path and a stroke path union and then you do you go file save as i'm going to put this on my desktop and i'm just going to call it textonpath.svg and save it then i'm going to open up canvas I'm going to come to a new project Come here and choose Import SVG. Click on Choose File. Go to my desktop. Okay, so here's my file opened in Canvas now. Now, I had four designs on my Inkscape page and it looks as though there's only three here, but one of them is very faint at the top and it mustn't have had a fill line properly so I'm going to select this one and you can see that's one shape I'm going to select this one and you can see that's another and I'm going to select this one and you can see that's another and then up here I'm just going to zoom in there's another one and it's very very faint and if I click on these letters they're individual letters. So I'm going to drag an imaginary box around everything and right click and select group. And then I'm going to come up here to properties and you can see there's no stroke and no fill. So I'm going to click on the first one and fill it with black and click on that one and fill it with black. And you can see they're there now. So when I zoom out, I've got the four designs that have all opened from Inkscape in Canvas. And then obviously all you need to do then is save your project, give it a name up here, save it using this icon here, and then you can download your design to a USB stick and put it on your machine and cut it. And obviously once you're in here, you know, you can resize these however you want, hold your shift key down and make them as big or as small as you want. You can ha add, you know, um, outsets to them if you want, you know, for matting layers and that kind of thing. It's entirely up to you. But I hope you found that helpful. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.